Hi, we've now reached the fifth lesson on the course, where we'll create the fifth scene of our animation. What we are going to need is this Illustrator file that I created earlier and divided into various layers, so you can animate each of them individually. And in After Effects, we'll create a new composition. Call it Scene 5. We'll use the same presets we've been using up until now. The duration will be 6 seconds. Ok, again, create a new solid as a background. Lock the layer. Right click Import File. And look for the Illustrator file, which is here. Select Composition as the import kind and layer size in footage dimensions. Ok, double click and here we have all our Illustrator files. Select all of them and Ctrl C to copy. Go to Scene 5, Ctrl V to paste. Right click Create Shapes from Vector Layer. Now delete the composition we have here called People, as well as the folder that contains the Illustrator files. We don't need them anymore. This project contains all the elements. We need to organize all of this now and change the colors so we can tell each layer apart. Select all of the people icons on the outside pressing shift. Make the layers red to tell them apart. Now we have this stroke which is a hexagon shape. Name it hexagon and change the color to aqua. Lock it and select this inside circle and the icon in the middle. Make them lavender color. Select these lines here on the inside. Make them orange. Now we can tell all the elements apart in the layers. Put these icons here. The blue ones on top like this. And we can start animating. Go to second one and then to the hexagon. Here in the options we are going to add a trim path effect. If we adjust the start, if we increase it, we can see that this point here is where the animation starts. But I want it to start from this one. So we leave it around here. In Offset, increase the degrees until you get to this point. Ok, there it is. But I want the animation to go this way. If you look, it goes the other way. So let's go to End and add a keyframe. Go to second 3 and add another one. We'll set this to 100%. In the stroke options, there's an option called dashes. Let's add dashes and we'll put 18. And we get this. Select the keyframes, right click Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease. Now we are going to animate the two shapes in the middle. Put the timeline at the beginning, select both layers and press S for the scale. Add a keyframe to each. Go to frame 20 and add another two. At the beginning, set the scale to 0% on both. Select the four keyframes, right click Keyframe Assistant Easy Ease. Go to the Graph Editor and select Edit Speed Graph. 
And just like we did in our previous animations, we'll make the middle of the animation faster. We'll carry on with these inner lines. Let's start with this one. Put it underneath. Make sure they're in order. Okay, like that. Go to frame 18 on the timeline and select the first line. Add the Trim Path effect. Go to Start and set it to 100%, then add a keyframe. Add second one, frame 12, add another keyframe and set this to 0%. Let's see what it does. Select both of them, right-click Assistant, Easy Ease. Go to the Graph Editor to apply that same effect. In Stroke, we can add those dashes again. 18. There we go. Press U to see the keyframes. Here they are. Copy them with Ctrl C. Go 5 frames forward. On next line, press Ctrl V to paste. And our keyframes have been pasted. And the effect also. 5 frames forward again and we'll do the exact same thing. So we are here on second one, frame 3, so we need to go to frame 8. Do the same for the remaining lines. And this is the animation. We just need to modify each line to make them dashes. In the stroke options, dashes 18. Do this for each line. I'll fast forward a bit. Okay, let's take a look. There they are. Select the first circle and press S for the scale. Go to second one and add a keyframe on the scale. 20 frames forward, add another one. Make the first one 0%. Select both and right click to easy ease. In the graph editor, set the speed in the middle. We just need to put these keyframes back slightly. OK, that's better. Copy these keyframes with Ctrl C and go approximately where this line is here. Paste them with Ctrl V. U to see the keyframes. Let's see if it fits. They just need to go back a bit. OK. See here that this line doesn't appear correctly. It should come out of the circle in the middle. Let's find that line in the layers. It's this one here. In this option here, select Reverse Path Direction. And now it should go the other way. For the third circle, more or less when the line is here, Ctrl V to paste. Press U. Let's see if it fits. 
Do the same for the rest of the circles. Now for the last one, let's take a look. Now we'll carry on with the icons that are inside the outer circles. Let's first put them in order. The first one, Control V. Press U and the keyframes from before have been copied. Let's see. Okay, that's good. Carry on and do the same for the rest of them. By copying and pasting the keyframes, we saved a lot of time. Okay, press U to close the keyframes and we are now going to add some text. Go to the text tool and click to type. Font Verdana. Bold 55 pixels. Show the guides so we can place the text properly. Around here. Ctrl D to duplicate and drag the text down. Click on it to type and add your second line of text. Change the character to regular and the size to 45. Ctrl D on the text again and drag it down to the opposite corner. Change the text. Ctrl D to duplicate the other text and drag it underneath the one we just made and change it to whatever you want. Now we can turn off the guides. Now we need to animate these texts and we are going to do it very easily. Put the layers in this order. And this is what we'll do. We'll add a keyframe at the beginning. Select all four and press P for the position a keyframe on the position for all of them. And add second one, frame 25, another keyframe for each text. Okay, at the beginning, the first text, Courses Online needs to go off to the left. 24 seven also. And the other two go off to the right. This one isn't straight, so Ctrl Z to undo. You need to press Shift when you move to get a straight line. Select all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Go to the graph editor to adjust the speed. With all the text selected, select these frames and move this anchor point towards the middle. And the same for the other side. We save time like this instead of adjusting the speed of the text one at a time. Let's see our animation up to now. Select these keyframes and move them five frames forward. Then these four above. 5 frames forwards. And finally, the same for these two. 5 frames forward. Let's see. That's the effect we get. Great. All that's left to do is make our animations disappear. We start with the texts. Press P for the position. Go to second 4, frame 5. Copy this keyframe with Ctrl C, Ctrl V to paste it. Do the same for the other three. Go to second five, frame 15, and we'll copy and paste the other keyframes.
It seems that we copied the wrong keyframes for this text. That's okay, just delete it and copy and paste the correct ones. There we go. Select the four texts and go to the graph editor. There's nothing there, and that's because we also need to select the position. Holding down Ctrl, select the four positions. Select these frames and move the anchor points towards the middle. Do the same on the other side. Let's have a look. And that's the effect we get. Select the Enable Motion Blur option and apply it to all the text layers. If we zoom in, we can see it better. We need to make this text disappear first, then this one, this one and this one. There we go. And that's our animation. Very good. Now we also need to make the lines and the circles disappear. We'll do that by copying and pasting the keyframes. So first the circles need to go, then the outside lines, the inner ones and finally the icon in the center. Select all the circle layers and press U to see the keyframes. And as we did before, we need to copy and paste the keyframes. Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste. And continue with the rest of the circles. Ok, great, all our keyframes have been copied. The first ones that need to disappear are these ones. So we need to move these back like this. And we'll adjust the rest one by one. You can press Ctrl to unselect this one and keep the others selected. And adjust the rest of the circles in the same way. Let's preview and see how it looks. They now disappear. We need to do the same for the lines. U to hide these. Let's go with the line of the hexagon. Press U to see the keyframes. Take the timeline to about here. This is where it needs to disappear. Add a keyframe. Go to around here. Add another. On the last keyframe, 0% in end. Let's see. OK. Moving on to the inner lines. Select all of them. Press U once again. We'll copy and paste. Let's take a look. Ok, that's looking good. All that's left is the icon in the middle. These two layers here. Press U and then S for the scale. And we'll do the exact same thing. Copy and paste the keyframes. It shouldn't quite disappear yet at this point. So let's move them forwards a bit. First we need the icon to disappear and then the circle. Let's see the whole scene. There's just a small detail that we need to adjust. I think the circle needs to disappear a little bit later. So let's move it forward. Ok, great. As a final touch, we'll add a camera. Close these two layers. Go to Layer, New, Camera. 
35 millimeters. Okay. As it reminds us, cameras only affect layers that are 3D. So we'll make all our layers 3D like we did in previous scenes, except the background. In the camera, go to the transform options. Okay, right here. Add a keyframe to the position. And up to the end, we'll make it move on the z-axis, but we'll put a keyframe here to see up to what point we'll adjust. Go to the camera options and select this one for the z-axis. Click on the zine and drag back like this, just a bit. Let's see how it looks. OK, put this keyframe at the end. Select both, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, and you can see the effect that we applied to the z-axis. That's it for now. In the next lesson, we'll continue with scene 6. See you there.